Booktubers, Youtubers, Labas, Privet, Ola, Bonjour. This is Rigita again and today is May 10th and I want to show you what I've been doing since the last time. Well, uh, if I post the video today, you might be, if you're in the US, you might be able to run in the store if you still haven't heard about the big sale that Joann's is having for GMC floss, which is four flosses for a dollar, which is pretty good price. So, and it ends today, Tuesday in the evening. So I went yesterday and I think I might go today too and get some more. I'm kidding up some stuff. So see, it's all received for floss. Big long thing. And I, oh, it's noisy. I got total 233 flosses. So just don't tell my husband. So, yeah. You see the bag full of it? Full, full of it. Because I have quite a few uh, projects in mind to do. Some of them I heed um, or aid and some smaller ones. Um, so yeah, good deal on the floss. You can't go wrong with that. So since I'm started with the stash, I guess I'll continue. I also stopped by jo uh, Hobby Lobby since it's not that far from. I got, I haven't tried this artist brand yet. So um, that's what it's supposed to be. It's kind of cute, I thought it's pretty good. And, um, you know, I've heard from few of you that you like to hit um, those thrift shops. And uh, I like to support um, the ones that uh, use as money for a good cause. One of them is a store called Savers, which uh, helps uh, vets, like Vietnam veteran vets. Um, so that's where the money goes. Another one I occasionally check out is the ones for um, starter families who have a hard time getting back into life. Um, so um, I found some pretty neat frames. Um, and I thought, well, I don't have to use mat if I don't need to, but they have quite a few of these. It's a good size you know it's I don't care what the paper looks like in the bag because I'll be ripping that anyway but hey frame you can't get wrong with that um, so they're constantly replenishing those and one I think it might be good for my Mill Hill um, scenes I think that would be a perfect fit I can just cut off some parts if I wanted to use the mat um, and some other things and uh, one of the projects I was thinking of making sometime in the future is to cover a notebook and I found this well it's two dollars it says Bryce journal but if I'll cross stitch on the fabric I can just cover it and I can write all my projects what I'm doing when to start it what I was using it's plenty of stuff so and it's pretty hardcover, so it's good. Um, so let's see. And from one to three stitch, I just received yesterday. I got Mirabilia. Total, I think I've stitched already like seven Mirabilias and almost done with two more. So you can say, I like Mirabilia. So I saw this somewhere um, on one of the floss tubers. I'm like, that's kind of cute. You know, it's might be cute for my daughter's room and um, let's see and I never used the thread heaven I guess quite few of you were swearing that it's the greatest thing ever so I decided to try that out and I got some silk threads of different variation you know different kind of skein just the silk and um, they have one on back order and can you tell me why some of the silk threads are so expensive? I mean, that one is like $7.50 for... Is that like made 
with the gold or something? I mean, why is it so expensive where others you can buy for like two dollars or something in skein? So if you know, you can explain that, please tell me about it. And I need those silk threads and I started collecting. I'm not going to buy it all at once because I would go broke and my husband would not be happy. Because, But um, I also got cute stuff that what's it's needed and other stuff. It's for this gingerbread house. You know, a little shop. Well, not gingerbread, but... It's kind of cute little box. I thought I could store, you know, some of my needlework stuff, but it's a lot of specialty stitches, silk threads, different beads and charms. So one of them, I got this. And then I, since I'm from, original from Baltic States, I thought this is Baltic, Mon uh, Chat Lane, Mandala. So I'm trying to keep it with the theme so Baltic you know it's like a beach theme thing you know going on so I never done something like this so it's gonna be my um, first time and it needs quite a few of thread gather silk which is like $7.90 um, per each skein the that Water lily silk, ding dyes, rainbow gallery. So it's a lot of silk in there required too for all those special stitches. So I'm curious to, to make it. And um, another one um, with specialty stitches is going to be this um, nativity sampler, Victoria, Vic, Victorian sampler. So it's, it's kind of neat, you know, but it also, you know, it's variegated thread and silk thread and uh, pearl cotton will need it, but it's beautiful. So, let's see, those are my big purchases. Now on to my whips. Um, I mentioned in the last video that I've decided to do Stitch Mania, Crazy 15, day uh, new starts um, challenge and in the same time I've decided to do heat head challenge uh, uh, too which I need to finish by the end of this month because I'm taking a trip overseas to see my family so I'm really putting a lot of time in my heat challenge and the stitch mania I've decided to spend about an hour of stitching for each of the projects so it's been 10 days and I just finished my 10th project um, so I'll show you it's you know one hour is not a lot but still pretty good so I don't remember which I did first day which not I have to look back but this is for, I'm going to finish for the teachers to give my kids teachers. And I started going with like this. Okay, special teacher. Just words and some dots. Those are annoying to calculate how far it is. So that's one. Let's see. I've never used Bucilla before. A uh, kit. And it's... It comes with all the loose thread just jumbled all together. So luckily there were not many very similar colors. But that's what it's going to look like. Small design. It's one of the smallest I've ever done besides the teacher. And this is how much I was done in that hour. It took a bit to... Uh, I chattered out just that little area. So... That would be the bird head shape. You can kind of start seeing. So that's Bucilla. Um, let's see. I think it was yesterday. I did. I lost my picture of it. But I'm going to show from far away. My part of my chart. So it's something like this butterflies and uh, I used on one of my brand new tight fabrics 
like I showed you last video, if you want to go check it out, my first attempts of dyeing a bunch of colors. So you can't see from far. So this is the top of the moon cream color. So that's what I did only out of the whole thing. And uh, this fabric is just so soft. And then this is 32 count even weave. Then another one of my Stitch Mania challenge was uh, another that picture I lost because I've been collecting slowly those different projects for many years and uh, it took a while but it's like there's this kitty and a, and a place to for orchid to grow and the only thing that I did for a challenge was leaves okay and uh, I did not dye this fabric. I don't even remember where I got it, but it's a little lilac-y color. So I thought that would be beautiful with the orchid. I have a couple orchids growing and I need to repot them because they're overgrown out of the pot and they're blooming like crazy. Barely can support their own weight. Another project was like wedding couple is this one and I had this fabric dyed myself too and uh, what I've done hold on, so far is this is bride's head let's see if I can get it okay this is bride's head Gonna start with the veil right here. Uh, I was trying to count time myself for about an hour, and sometimes um, I do a little um, uh, charting, drawing 10 squares um, during that time. So it's still an hour spent, at least one hour. Another project. This is going to be something like this and I'm using linen burlap towel that I cut in half and let me make sure I position, oh, let's see, which is this way, okay. And I'll have to put an insert in the bag and stuff like that. So. It's, oh, hold on, I can't see, can you fold it more? The leaves, I think I'm pointed correct way, or maybe it's, oh, <laughs> sideways. All right, uh, this is a right, like outline of this part, okay? And this burlap linen fabric is quite soft, you know, it's not like pure burlap that kind of makes you itchy. So that's another project. Another day I did Clouds Factory, very first Clouds Factory, Golden Girls. I'm gonna do for my, one of, uh, maybe all of them, Canasta friends from my group. And I started doing Sophia, see the red one, and I can probably say I dyed this fabric to myself, it's, although it's 14 count Ada, it's a stiff one, but I had the fabric, and I thought if I do on a smaller size, it might look way too small, because right now it's 2.4 inches tall on the whole design, so... That's that. Look, this way. I spent a little bit of time on that. Um, and another one I... Actually, today I did um, start it 
for what work for one hour and just a little bear very cute bear I love this author and which way it goes all right so I started with the top of the head one color right now see just right this part going no this one this side going it's not a lot of stitches but bunch of counting and uh, it's the 28 or 32 count fabric for that going over two so it's not bad I might I might do this <laughs> covering I might do this bear um, for uh, my nephew or my son kind of likes it for his like birth announcement little souvenir um so let's see I'm planning to finish one of my stitch mania uh, 15 day challenge um, was to finish up this one I had last time done design but um, I started working on the numbers and took a while to figure out what size letters and what style letters I wanted to do and different type of numbers so I've been um, I pull out my graph paper and uh, started drawing on that the way I wanted so I kind of did mismatch of um, a couple different styles of numbers that I thought that would look the best and uh, my last biggest work is for my husband, I'm doing this. I know it's gone now. I couldn't, can't believe that people are saying, oh, I wish I knew and got it from Doctor Who. So I'm doing the challenge. I think I'm on the eighth color. So you kind of can start telling, you know, the TARDIS and uh, it's looking, yeah. So I'm doing cross country traveling. I've never done full parking before, but I'm planning to try out after I'm done with this challenge and I come back from a big trip. Okay, uh, for my finished project, I haven't showed you this at all before. So if you have a little baby kid or kind of prudish, you might want, I don't know, I don't know if you can skip it, but close your eyes and don't look but um, in one of my um, different Facebook groups uh, we had this sale going on with the couples and they're naked so I didn't want to do anything like whoa you know I, I can't show that to anybody you know above age 23 or something but I like this design and this is what I made it's, I thought that was very artistically done, you know, picture and design that just shows passion and love and all kinds of, you know, emotions that's not necessarily, you know, like bad, bad, you know. So I finished this and I'm trying to figure out the frame to put it on this, but I loved it. It's just... It shows such a strong emotion, you know, it's like such a big hug that they, like they never would let go of each other. You know, it's pure. So that was my finish. Um, okay. And um, I thought about trying out and doing the tag. And uh, how better we, which way is better to know uh, each other if not to start off with the know your needle worker tag which was posted uh, one year one and a half year ago by Wimsy Daisical okay so first question where do you live I'm reading questions off the side I've mentioned before I live in Pretty much middle of USA um, by St. Louis, Missouri, but I'm on the Illinois side. So if if somebody asks, you know, oh, you're from Illinois, you know, so 
you know, can we just hop in the car and go to Chicago? Chicago is like five, six hours away from us. So we're literally like half hour and I'm in St. Louis across the river, St. Louis downtown where the big arch is. Sometimes in the movies you can see big arch by the riverside. So this is where I live. It's a pretty small town, um, but we're like living right dead smack in intersection of different towns. Like I, um, we pay taxes in our town, you know, name, but my, uh, our kids are in a different town school district and our post office in another town area so it's like three different things and practically across the street is already fourth down um line so it's it's always like in this last house we lived it was literally be, uh, used to be in one town's um area and now we're another so it's again like and we li like to live on the board <laughs> um and i came from a country called lithuania Eastern Europe by the Baltic Sea, uh, the one that started USSR breakup. So if you wanted to polish your history. Second question, what do you do for a living? I'm stay at home mom. And um, since they all started full time school this year, I'm planning to start looking for a paying job in this fall, hopefully. Because you can, you know, you can go nuts uh, just staying home and doing the same thing over and over and not uh, interacting with real life people besides like your kids after school or throughout the whole day. And you're, if you're not careful, I think your I, um, IQ level is just keeps going down, down to like, whatever age is your kid. So you really have to find some ways to entertain yourself and your brain. But um, technically I signed up because I started loving those products and I'm a um, company called Stampin' Up. Uh, I'm a demonstrator. And what I started liking about it once um, I've tried out is I like how their paper is dyed all the way through, you know. You go in um, regular stores to buy any size 12 by 12 or smaller paper. And if it looks solid color, you rip it or you cut it and there's still like white color inside. And Stampin' Up! is color all the way through. And they have a lot of matching uh, items of the same color like, uh, you know, ribbons, ink, paper, uh, any attachments like uh, C uh, beads and uh, sequins, all kinds of stuff. So I love it. Um, if you never heard of it or you might think it might be kind of cool, I know they're coming up right now with a brand new catalog. So I'll put them my link below so you can just kind of check out and browse if you want that website. Um, what I liked also about that company that um, it started as like a living room company with the um, American made stamps um, by like two sisters and one of them a CEO and she's passing this year uh, fully um, her position to her daughter. But they think um, that you should give to others, you know, do what you love and share and joy and give to others back. So they're um, very into it that, you know, help out and uh, give back to not only their own Stampin' Up! people and demonstrators and uh, customers, but to the community. They do a lot of humanitarian stuff too. Um, and some of the uh, things they started to come up with is called paper pumpkin. Um, it's mo it's geared a lot towards those beginners or those who don't want to just have a bunch of leftover stuff going on because, you know, if you want to try to make cards or little gift boxes or anything out of the paper craft, um, you don't want to have a bunch of stuff left. So that paper pumpkin is... Um, 
it comes in your mailbox you can like subscribe try out for one month or you can do continue you know do three six or a whole year continuous and then um, you get some discount if you do it continuously but it comes to your mailbox uh, for 1995 which is already included in shipping and you each month is something different you know it's sort of like a, what, what he does with the attic box you don't exactly know what you will get but you'll know it's gonna be something great you know um, so that's what they do it the it has a whole project like a kit if it needs any embellishments it's there you know everything is like pre-cut um, pre-measured all attachments all the little accessories are there and they usually have specific for that month exclusive stamp set and little stamp pad which you can continue use you know you just need extra paper and so you can still have that left over and um, and that's a great gift you know for somebody just if you don't know who to give what to give for person it's like hey you want to try out you know here we go happy birthday or something like that so i love that i'm a subscriber and um they just had like one year anniversary so they're 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 great you know and you can check out they have how to put instructions that are on paper but you can uh, also look on youtube they have how to put it all together and there you can do all kinds of variations if you don't want to stick to their exact design it could be bags it could be little mini frames that you put stuff inside you know and so it's anyway it's great i can talk about it for hours <laughs> if you can't tell um so besides that i'm on like tons of different um groups and committees just I started just to keep my IQ and up and uh, talk to real live human beings who are above like age five you know um, um, since I'm from Lithuania there is Lithuanian American community in the greater St. Louis area so I'm in there that committee main thing um, and we do uh, at least twice a year stuff um, like after mass in a church, Lithuanian church, um, we do meals, you know, we do little gatherings, we try to do, we used to do like even little classes that are teaching you about what is unique about Lithuanian uh, handcraft stuff. Uh, besides that, I go to um, Barbershop a cappella women's chorus that I drive for minimum 40 minutes depends from the traffic in St. Louis to sing. Um, this chorus got a lot of um, winnings in regional area. I've been with them only a couple of years, but already have been to international competition and recently went in regional competition. Um, if you see my little picture on my dis description area, I got that's our uh, performance dress and we got a couple medals um, in there so I'm there on the committee management committee and um, in musical part because my background my degree is in music I spent about 13 years in different music schools graduating and my degree is choir conducting but I noticed in US if it's hard to get a job in that area unless you want to do like a church ministry and I don't want to spend every weekend and holidays going working in a church um, I do, we travel quite a bit to my husband's side since it's a little bit too far to go on every holiday to visit my folks so um, a lot of holidays are um, going up north to my husband's side because they're like in Chicago area in Wisconsin and Michigan state so um, I do some volunteer work at the church different jobs I'm a Girl Scout leader for my uh, daughter's troop um, and uh, let's see I'm looking <laughs> um, 
I do little started years back a Lithuanian genealogy side because I got interested in genealogy once I left the country, which usually happens. You know, you think when you're in somewhere in your area, it's like, oh, we have all the time in the world to go see this and do that and that. And then if you move out, it's like, oh, darn, you know, I wish I checked out this place or that place. So um, I, you, I would go to... Each visit I go to Lithuania, I would go to archives and spend a few days at least poring over books and uh, searching for my ancestors and below. And through internet, I found one of my, um, it was my grandma's parents, uh, father's brother, and all other branches because we're. Uh, our branch was cut off um, from other branches, so um, I, I stumbled upon um, one of the other relatives who was researching genealogy of our branch. Um, so I stumbled upon him and we started talking and we did our family reunion together. So he, he got the place and uh, we I talked to my side, he talked to his side and it's the first time we all met together. It was great, you know. So I have that genealogy thing going on. Uh, I created um, our my subdivision welcoming committee. Um, and uh, there are a couple of us that, it, when we find out there is somebody new moved in in our subdivision, we go in and uh, introduce ourselves and we have something to give to them and welcome to our area and ask questions. So it's kind of get to know your neighbor kind of thing. Uh, I help out occasionally in schools. Uh, like I just recently went with one of my kids um, field trips and the farm. And I'm going to go to, it's called Bistown, where we spend a whole school day pretending like we're in a real world job. So kids get a little taste of that. Um, so that's what I do for a living, right? <laughs> Besides stitching and uh, taking care of a big house and big yard. And we still have old house that we're um, straightening out for sale. Third question. Do you have any children? Yes, they do. Three of them. And all three are in different schools right now, this year at least, and for a couple more years. One is a freshman in a high school. Another one is first year in the middle school. And they, I have a kindergartner. So three different schools. And all three of them have extra curriculum activities. All three of them are in the scouts, Boy Scouts um, and the Girl Scouts, and their meetings are in the same time in three different locations, practically three different towns. So it's fun to juggle, <laughs> juggle this up. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have any pets? Not currently. About a year and a half ago, we um, lost our dog, Golden Retriever. Um, at that time when we decided to take him. All right, my recording cut off, me, cut me off because it's maximum time. So, um, we had to take him down because he had a bad tumor and we held him as long as we could. Uh, and once we saw in his eyes that he was given up on life, then we... I had to make a hard decision and our oldest who was in a scout camp that same time um, didn't get a chance to say goodbye. But we didn't want to destroy his happy camping time with the bad news until he came home. So, and we had Golden Retriever before that time. You know, funny thing is how people say, you know, oh, you know, dogs have like a sixth sense. Uh, if you feel bad, then they'll know it, you know, they'll comfort you. That was true of the first dog. With this dog's uh, shadow, no way. Um, you probably could be bleeding to death on the floor. 
he would still want to just you get up and play with him. Um, while playing and energetic was the reason why we picked him from a whole litter. Uh, we had our son um, when he was about nine months old or ten. We brought him in the puppy litter and we sat him on the floor and we let all those puppies run around him and we saw how, which one would interact with him more. So he, that puppy was the one that was kept jumping on him and trying to bite his ear. So we thought, oh, you know, great companion to kids, you know, energetic, playful. He stayed like that for all of, well, he was almost 13 years. So never lost that enthusiasm, that dog. You know, he would sleep and when he get older a little bit more, but he was always tail wagging, you know, play with me, throw the ball and stuff like that, dog. So our kids bugging for a new pet, but um, with our overseas traveling, um, it's kind of hard to leave him here for that long. So in the future, we'll look it up. Okay, number five, what are your other hobbies besides stitching? <laughs> Too many to have enough time, you know, in the world to concentrate on each. Um, besides cross-stitching, you know, I do the paper crafting with Stampin' Up. I sing in the cho that chorus. I like to make desserts, like uh, to decorate a uh, different style and type cookies. I finished all... Um, Wilton cake decorating classes, so I do cakes occasionally, different styles. Um, I try to uh, make at least one brand new recipe. I have like one book that I specifically picked out and at least once a week I make something totally new from that. And um, what I've decided to do, what I've been doing is with all the new recipes, after my family tastes it and eats it, they have to give um, how they like from 0 to 10. You know, 0 is the worst, the 10 is the best. So I gather up those numbers and then I come with the average number and I write it down in the book with a pencil. So this way, you know, I browse through the book. It's like, oh, you know, we've tried that before. Really loved it. Maybe we should try that again, you know, so... And that's what I'm trying to do with the food. I don't really like to cook, but having family, it's, that's what you have to do, you know. I don't like to do a lot of takeouts and greasy food, stuff um, like that. I love to read, um, but majority, I'm so got, getting used to, well, got used to reading like a light reading, light books uh, in a contest, context because I always been interrupted before with the kids. So I guess it kind of got in my blood. And uh, so I really, I'm, I am fast reader as it is. So I practically swallow those books. You know, um, if I had to buy every book that I wanted to read, I would have like two full rooms of books probably. So I just finished... Um, Stucky Stag House by Charlene Harris, a uh, whole series. You know, um, if there is a book in a series and the new comes out, I start reading from very first all the way to the new book, you know. Um, so I finished that and I'm gonna start on um, Anita Blake series. Author is uh, Laura K. Hamilton. She's from St. Louis. And uh, character Anita is based in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so if you like paranormal, you know, vampires, um, zombies, and uh, different creatures. And she does a lot of in-depth um, work with the police, the character. Um, the author really does a lot of research for that to get exactly. So she does crime scenes um, and really goes into detail when solving those crimes. It's it's kind of neat, you know. Um, but if you're more prude, you might not want to read her books <laughs> because I think is that after third or fifth, there's many books. Um, she gets in the hot steamy scenes, which, you know, I kind of start running through it because I'm more interested in 
what's actually going on. Um, and uh, Anita Blake's series started way before Twilight Sparkle, way before, um, I think, even Interview with the Vampire and uh, Suki Stairhouse, True Blood, all of that, you know. So she's been writing those books. I think it might be like 25, and she's going to publish next one in this fall. So she has been writing for years um, before it got very popular with all the vampire stuff. Um, let's see, what else do I like as a hobby? I know how to knit, so I've been doing some knitting. I've tried crochet and I've been gathering stuff to try out Irish crochet. I'm, um, I got interested in making natural homemade stuff, you know, like a cl cleaners. I make my own laundry soap. Um, I replaced all my kitchen cleaners of uh, my own homemade, um, more organic, I guess, cleaner. I'm interested in uh, starting doing gardening. Um, we had a garden before, but uh, we had to kind of plow over, put the dirt on top, so I'm remaking my garden area. I'm planning to put some fruit trees for kids. Um, so yeah, I have a big variety, I think, of hobbies. And usually not enough time to do all of that, like more in depth. Um, so I'm kind of just putting more time in the cross stitching and uh, paper crafting. Fifth question, uh, or is it six? Um, what's your favorite? Oh, for upcoming questions um, about movies and books and stuff. You know, I like a lot of, like, broad ver views of things, you know, from classics to fantasy, supernatural stuff. It's, you know, and it's hard to decorate rooms. It just depends what mood I'm in. And am I in, uh, like, 1800s type of mood or I'm, like, in a dark night stuff mood, you know. So I would love to have a house that I can decorate different rooms in totally different style, you know, but my family would think I'm cuckoo. What's your favorite movie? I like a lot of movies. Depends from which mood I'm in. But I love Dracula. And um, from different spectrum, like a Pride and Prejudice. I have all different versions of them and... Um, I like the older versions more. Um, what's your favorite TV show? I practically don't watch regular TV. I think I know only a couple of channels um, that are for kids because I don't turn on. I usually, if I want to watch something, I go on uh, Hulu Plus or some other one we have that's like pre recorded. Um, so on Hulu, I finish watching. Um, is that elementary? It's like Noah Day, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson uh, with Lucy Liu, I think. Um, so I finished watching what they had in there, the whole, se all of the seasons, and I stumble upon it, and now I'm watching Lucifer. It's just kind of fun little detective, crime-solving little show, this Lucifer. <laughs> um, favorite book? It's the same way, you know, since I read so much, I cannot just stick to one book. Um, so you can have any picks, you know. I've I've read uh, more serious ones. Um, one was interesting that if you sit down and think, um, it's, I think, Interview of God, where apparently this guy was writing a book and, like, started writing questions to God and then started getting answers in his own handwriting. So there are a couple interesting uh, things I've read that kind of made sense. I'm not like super religious, but um, I think those some of the answers could be looked from non-religious view. And, well, you kind of have to check it out, you know. Um, and like I said, a lot of books I read is light reading. 
because I'm so used to that. Everything I do is kind of, I'm so used to multitasking that I cannot just relax with one, doing one thing. If I'm doing a laundry, then I, at the same time, I have to go around do some, you know, vacuum room or something like that. Favorite music? Again, depends from a mood. From a classics like Bach or Mozart, um, I listen to then Barbershop, Apa Capella, and like Pure Barbershop and Pentatonix, which is like side barbershop thing, a cappella at least. From I like Pink, and I've read somewhere that Pink has some Lithuanian blood in her. I listen sometimes Evanescence group uh, within Temptation. Uh, if I want a more relaxing mood, I listen to Enya. Speaking of music, I was just talking to my parents on Skype. Wonderful thing, Skype, I think. Um, today is the first semifinals in Eurovision contest. I always watch that. And uh, if uh, in the past, if I was in Europe in that time, I would vote for um, my favorite song. So I subscribe to internet TV so I can see everything my parents see. It's just, I can see five weeks back. All the shows are recorded. So I have lots of channels that I wanna check out. Um, so I'm gonna be watching Eurovision. I have a couple songs I really like. Uh, one of them is Australian song. You would think, you know, Eurovision, it's like European countries and Australia is way off the side. But it's the second year that Australia is invited in Eurovision. And I think that, that song is very unique, you know, it's cool. There are quite a few songs that I really liked and other songs I'm thinking, that's the best they can do, you know, in the whole country. Um, so we'll see how who wins you know i have a couple of suspicions who might win but i'm not gonna tell you okay and the last question what one word best describes you i thought long and hard and i even had to look up online <laughs> what i want to say like in one word and i would say adventures um what in description I found it means as a personality type. Adventurous person is the one who displays curiosity, interest, novelty seeking, openness to experience. Well, I crossed the ocean because I was curious about uh, US, uh, North America. I came as a visitor and I met my husband and I'm stuck here which it's not bad, <laughs> you don't think, to take me wrong. But I was always curious and always want to try out new things, except food. I'm very sensitive what I eat. Like for some people, the food might be just mild. For me, it would be spicy. So I have to stick to kind of traditional foods, you know, nothing exotic to me. No exo exotism at all. Um, so besides food, um, yeah, I always want to see how this works or how is this would be interesting, you know, to see something new, different, to try something new, different. No drugs. No drugs. Um, so, yeah, uh, when um, I was a teenager, uh, I visit, me and friends visited... Um, like nunnery, I guess, nun um, monastery. And uh, because they allow to do tours in this beautiful place, you know, by the big, huge lake. And I saw there was a door to like a basement, outside basement, you know, slightly open. And I was trying to sneak it in and I got caught. <laughs> but I wanted to see what nuns keep in the basement, you know. So, uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to see <laughs> Maybe it's just like vegetable area that they kept, you know, from their garden. I'll never know. Bummer. So, yeah, I'm an adventurous, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, okay, so getting back to stitching. You know, I've never heard of needle minders until I started talking on Facebook and watching YouTubers. 
So I never had needle minders and I see so many cool ones are there. Um, I think I'm thinking about getting a few of them. So um, you've heard what I like. So if you know a um, good um, maker, seller, um, let me know, post it, you know. And um, speaking about postings, I'm amazed how many of you actually managed to watch and my two previous videos and subscribed and I what I do is I go I started to go through my list of subscribers and I watch all of them from first to current episode and I've subscribed to them and uh, so thank you for subscribing to me I really learn a lot of stuff from you guys too you know and I try to answer everybody's comments back and uh, I'm glad you guys liked how I colored my how I dyed my fabric I think I'm gonna dye all of them from now on myself if I can except like fabric from where it's gonna be full picture like heed you know so yeah, uh, so if you know any needle minders, good ones, you know, that I might like, post a link or something. And I'm going to give you again inspirational motto by uh, David Guy Powers. And he says, each day is a new life. Seize it, live it. So that's it for me. Bye-bye. Till next time. Ata.